This tutorial will describe some of the basic properties of the Integrate and Fire neural model that's used in Animatlab. Let's begin by creating a new project. A copy of this tutorial is available in the folder Program Files, Animatlab, Tutorials, Neural Networks. Please choose where you want to create this project and then name it Integrate and Fire Neurons. Let's add a new organism and open its behavioral editor. Now add a spiking neuron to our diagram. The neuron is modeled as a resistor capacitor circuit in which the user sets the time constant. The nominal input resistance is set at 1 mega ohm, but this can be altered by changing the relative electrical size. Doubling the size effectively halves the input resistance. Each neuron has a default resting membrane potential that can be set by the user. The neuron also has a spike threshold which is defined by the initial threshold parameter. If the membrane potential exceeds the threshold, the neuron spikes. A spike is modeled as a brief one integration time step shift in the membrane potential to a defined peak amplitude. No current flow is modeled during the depolarizing phase of the spike, so the spike is largely cosmetic. This is done to increase the speed of the simulation, but it can also reduce the realism of effects mediated by electrical and non-spiking chemical synapses. The main problem is that the spike is shorter in duration than it may be in reality which means that less current flows in an electrical synapse. A spike in a neuron is followed by a sudden increase in membrane conductance with the amplitude defined by the after hyperpolarizing potential conductance parameter. This conductance in increase is to an ion with an equilibrium potential defined by the AHP equilibrium potential parameter and would normally be set to a value appropriate for potassium ions. The after hyperpolarizing conductance then decays exponentially back to a zero value with the defined time constant. Following a spike, there's also a brief defined absolute refractory period during which the threshold is set infinitely high. Add a tonic current stimulus to our neuron. Set its start time to 50 milliseconds. in time to 100 milliseconds and amplitude to 30 nanoamps. Then let's add a new line chart so we can watch the effect of the stimulus on the membrane voltage of our neuron. Set the end time of the chart to be 200 milliseconds and set the collect data interval to be 0.2 milliseconds. This is the time step used by this neural module. Setting it to the same value will ensure that we'll see all the data from this neuron. Now run the simulation. Our stimulus has depolarized the neuron above the threshold value and caused it to begin firing action potentials. Let's decrease the firing threshold and see what happens. When we decreased the firing threshold, it reduced the hurdle for the stimulus to drive it above the threshold and produced a much more robust burst of spikes. Next, let's change the time constant to 50 milliseconds. This decreases the responsiveness of the neuron by increasing the capacitive effects of the membrane. This means that it takes longer for the neuron to respond to changes in current. This is what caused long tails on either side of the short burst the membrane voltage changed much more slowly and took longer to reach the threshold. Set the time constant back to 5 milliseconds. And then change the relative accommodation to 0 0.7. Accommodation means that the spike threshold potential varies as the membrane potential varies. 
An accommodation level of zero means no accommodation at all. The threshold is fixed at its defined initial value. An accommodation level of one means that when the membrane potential changes, the threshold also changes so it eventually becomes equal to the new membrane potential. However, the spike threshold does not change instantaneously. It approaches its new value with an exponential time course as defined by the accommodation time constant. Thus rapid changes in membrane potential can induce spiking, even if the relative accommodation level is large, so long as the accommodation time constant is also long. When we run this simulation, we can see that the spikes begin to slow the longer the burst lasts. If we decrease the accommodation time constant, then this reduces the time it takes for the neuron to adapt to the firing rate. If we increase it to 15 milliseconds, then it takes longer to adapt. Let's reset the relative accommodation to 0 0.3 and its time constant back to 10 milliseconds to get back to where we were before. Now we'll change the after hyperpolarization conductance. At the end of an action potential, the potassium channels are wide open trying to bring the membrane potential back down to its resting levels. However, those channels can't close instantaneously. It takes them a few milliseconds. During this time, the potassium conductance is enhanced and there's an after hyperpolarization where the membrane drops below the resting potential. The after hyperpolarization conductance controls this effect. Let's go in and increase this conductance to 10 microsiemens. Now, when we run the simulation, the time between spikes has increased. This is because the cell is more hyperpolarized after each spike and it takes longer for it to get back to threshold. We can also control the time course of the after hyperpolarization by changing its time constant. Let's change that value to be 10 milliseconds. Increasing the time constant increases the time till the conductance drops back to normal and this delays the ability of the neuron to reach threshold even more. Animate Lab also includes a non-spiking neuron. However, the only real difference between it and the spiking version is that it has an initial threshold that defaults to a very large value. This prevents spikes from occurring. The non-spiking neuron can be used for compartmental modeling of dendrites and for mod modeling of the membrane voltage of muscles. There are also some important global properties for all of the integrate and fire neurons. You can find global properties for each neural module by clicking on the Neural Modules tab and then selecting the module you're interested in. In this case, select the realistic neural module. It has a number of important properties. This includes things like the equilibrium potential for the after hyperpolarization conductance. One global property that every neural module has is the time step. This sets the time interval between integration steps for this neural module. Each module can have a different time step value, and that value can also be different from the time step used by the physics engine. This allows you to have neural modules that run at different time scales, so you can have a really abstract model that runs very fast, and a more detailed model that runs slower. This tutorial has covered the basic properties of the integrate and fire neural model that's used in AnimeLab.